Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to be discussing the ArrayList class and how to manage dynamically sized collections of data. Uh, so to begin, let's declare a new ArrayList. And the ArrayList collection contains specific types of things. You have to tell it the type of thing that you want the ArrayList to hold. So in this case, let's actually hold candy bars. Of course, we could do something like uh, string and maintain a list of names. But uh, you've got examples of that elsewhere. So let's maintain a list of candy bar. So the array list is the type, but then within the less than greater than brackets, we're going to specify the type of thing that we want the array list, the array list to hold. So I'm going to create a object called shopping cart that is of type array list that holds candy bars. And I'll just instantiate this. Don't forget your parentheses because you are creating, you're calling the constructor essentially here. And if we right click, we can fix the imports and bring in Java Util array list. You'll notice that in my project, I have the candybar.java class already brought in and all of its different um, parts, but we're not going to actually modify that. We're just going to make use of it in our program here. And what's different between this and the previous tutorial that discussed the collection class where we used an array to hold the different candy bars is that the array list is going to automatically size and resize for us based on what we put into it. So that's quite nice. We don't have to worry about all of the details. And if we want to add something to the array list, we can just use the add method and we pass it the thing that we want to add. Now, since it's holding candy bars, we have to create a new candy bar and place it in there. And in this case, we'll just go with the default candy bar. Okay, so since the candy bar constructor that takes in no parameters is going to say it's the nothing bar and so forth, then we'll have a single candy bar in our array list. I can also add a new candy bar and actually pass it the parameters. So let's add a Snickers to our collection. And it has 310 calories and it weighs 2.01 ounces and it costs me 95 cents. So at this point I have an array list with two different objects within it and let's do some work to print out what's in the array list. If we, if we just run this right now, it runs, and we can see that the candy bars are being created, but nothing is being displayed showing what's in our array list. So beyond the add method, let's look at how to display and get access to the items in our collection. Let's print out something to the effect of... Uh, we want to say that our candy bars, uh, so give a header to this, and let's use a for loop and access the shopping cart size method. And size is going to tell us how many elements are actually in the array list. It doesn't tell us the capacity, but it tells us how many elements are actually in the list itself. So we'll say, for int i, uh, zero, so long as we're less than the size, then increment i. And the work that I'd like to do is just to system out println the shopping cart. And let's use our get method. We pass it an index. So the get function of the array list type takes in an integer, and it's going to return the object that is placed at that particular position in the list. Okay, easy enough. So we've got a simple loop. If we run this, you can see that our two candy bars are being created. And then down here we have our default nothing bar. And we have the Snickers with 310 calories costing us uh, 95 cents there. So this is quite nice. We can use the array list to store objects. In this case, we're storing candy bars. I'm going to show you a different way of actually accessing the elements by using a special for loop because so often when we want to process an array list we want to go across all of the elements and we can use this for loop with the temporary counter i and use the get method to get that ith 
uh, element in the array. But let's access them again using a different for loop structure. And the syntax for this is going to look a little bit different. But uh, the shopping cart is the thing that I want to iterate across. I'm going to use this colon notation. And candy bar is the type of thing that's held in the shopping cart. And CB is going to be the temporary candy bar reference that I'm going to have as I iterate across this. So this for loop is going to give me it's going to repeat across every candy bar in this collection and I can reference the individual candy bar within the for loop using this variable. I could call this Bob if I wanted to but I'm going to use CB for candy bar and then I'm just going to system out println CB. So this is the object that I want to print and I'm getting that object by going across the entire shopping cart. Now if we run this You'll notice that we get our two candy bars created. The candy bars output here is from this first for loop. And then the candy bars again output is the same thing. It's just using a different way of accessing uh, the array list using this new for loop notation. To give you a little bit more experience using the array list, let's actually make a new class that maintains an array list internally and stores all of the uh, collection of candy bars internally, so simplifying main here a bit. So let's right click and add a new Java class, and I'm going to call this class cart. So it'll be like a shopping cart. Let's imagine we wanted to create an application where users could buy different products. I'm going to keep things a little bit simple in this example, and just create a, an array list of candy bar. And I'm going to call this data. And then in my constructor, I'm not going to take anything in, but I'm just going to initialize the data to be a new array list of candy bar. And what I'd like to do is fill in by default the array list with some values. Okay, let's resolve this and fix the imports. So we've got Java Util array list now ready to go. So I'm going to paste in some code that I had previously written elsewhere before this tutorial just to save us some time and populate the data in this cart with I think about eight different candy bars. Now in a real application you would ask the user perhaps what they wanted to buy and then place the candy bars in but the emphasis of this example in this tutorial is actually to show you how we can display all of the information out and how we can search for a particular candy bar. That's what I want to show you that you can do on the array list. Okay, so we've got back here in our main this ability to print out the candy bars. Let's just copy that and create a new method internally in the cart. I'm going to make this a public void function. We'll call it print. And we could overload the toString function, but I'm going to keep it uh, simple and just put it here inside of my collection and do the printing here. It's not called shopping cart in this context, it's called uh, data. Right. So I'm going to iterate across everything in my data array list and print it out. I'm going to indent it slightly so we can see the collection. And easy enough, that's how we can iterate across the array list and display things out. So it's really just identical to what we had done in main earlier. Now I just have a method called print that'll do it for us. Okay, here in main, let's go back and I'm going to comment out what we had before as far as our two candy bar collection. And now let's create a cart, which we just created. And I will call this my treats equal to a new cart and I'll call my new print method and that's all I'm going to do. So this cart should actually contain quite a few candy bars because in the constructor I'm just by default putting a bunch of them in. And so if we run now we'll see that all the candy bars are being created in that constructor and then here is the result of the print method. Okay, so we've got uh, a few Snickers, a Zagnut, an Almond Joy and so forth. All right, so everything looks good. 
And that's quite nice that we now have a class that will maintain the ArrayList in there. The problem is the ArrayList is private, so if I wanted to get access to one particular element, I can't do that right now. Here in main, I couldn't say mytreats.get because that data structure is private. So let's add a new method. We'll call it uh, get bar. And the purpose of this get bar function is to take in an integer, which is the index, into the array that I want. And I want to return the candy bar at that ith spot. So if i is greater than or equal to 0, and i is less than data.size, meaning you're giving me a valid index, it's at least 0, so you're not giving me a negative index, that doesn't make any sense to ask for the negative 7th bar. And also, i will be less than the size of my array list, meaning you're not asking me for the 10th bar and there's only 7 of them in here. So if we've got a valid index, then I want to return the data of get i. So I'm going to take the ith value out of my private data array list and return it to the user. Otherwise, if you gave me an invalid index, I'm going to return null. So I'm not going to give you a, a valid, uh, I'm going to give you a null, meaning you didn't give me a valid index, so I just need to return back. Uh, and I see I have an error here, that's because I incorrectly placed a semicolon at the end of my if statement. So now we've got if else as we properly should. Okay, let's go back up here into main and ask for, uh, let's say, the third candy bar. So let's say system.out.println mytreats.get bar of 2. Okay, and what this is going to do then is it's going to search into my mytreats class and invoke the getBar method, and as we see here, it's going to give us the third bar. Remember, we start counting at zero, so we should get this almond joy back. Let's run, and sure enough, we get our almond joy bar printed out here. Very good. Well, that's fine if we want to find a single candy bar. And in our previous tutorial on arrays, when we built the collection class, we could search for a particular candy bar by name and it would return the first one. But the problem and limitation of that implementation was what if it only, uh, what if it had more than one candy bar of the same name? Like in this case, we've got uh, four Snickers bars. I'd like to be able to search on the name or search on some value and if there are more than one occurrence to return all matches based on that search. So in this case, since we have the array list, it's a perfect way of returning all of the values via an array list. So let's create a new method called get bars. Notice this is plural now and I'm going to take in a string to match and this is what I'm going to be looking for here. Now, I need a return type on this get bars. The purpose of this is that I want to go across the entire array list, and for all of the candy bars in my collection that have this matching name, I want to return those candy bars. So I'm going to need an array list of candy bar. Notice I can use the array list here as a return value in my function. And this will be quite useful to me so that I can return a collection of the candy bars that match based on this to match string that I'm looking for. So the implementation of this is that I'll need a results that is an array list of candy bars. And I want to iterate across the entire collection So we'll use our new for structure here. Oh, whoops, I need uh, my parentheses. I indicated not to forget that earlier, and I just did that, so sorry about that. So make sure that you've got your open and close parentheses when you're invoking the new array list there. Okay, so if we have a match, meaning that the candy bar that I'm currently on and its name equals this to match, so 
CB is the current candy bar as I iterate across my array list. I'm going to get the name of that candy bar and say, does that candy bar's name equal this string that I've brought in? And if that's the case, then I want to add this candy bar into the results set that I'm building. Now in memory, what's going on is I have the candy bars in memory and I have the array list and the array list actually holds references to the candy bar objects. So I'm not allocating new memory using this result set. I'm just having results and data point to the same spaces essentially. But the results is going to, after this loop, going to be filled with all the candy bars whose names match this to match that I'm bringing in. I have an interesting method called trim to size that's part of the ArrayList class. And the ArrayList by default holds, let's say, 20 spaces, even though initially they're all empty. And as I fill it in with new values, that ArrayList will start to fill, but there will be some empty spaces. In this case, I know exactly how many things I'm going to have at this point because I've done a search and I've filled in my result set. So trim to size is going to remove all of those empty spaces and make the capacity match the size of the array list. So it's nice and tight and doesn't waste any memory there. The last thing I need to do is just return the results. Okay, so now we have our function called get bars that takes in this string and it iterates across the entire data collection and builds this results array list of candy bars that match by name. Now let's go back into main and make use of this. So let's create a array list of candy bars and I'm going to call this what to eat. And my what to eat is going to be filled in with all of the Snickers. So let's do a search on that. What to eat is equal to my treats, which is the entire collection of all of the candy bars, dot get bars. And I'm going to pass it Snickers, saying I want to find all of the Snickers in my collection. Maybe this is after Halloween, and I've got all these different candy bars in there, and I'd like to find all of the Snickers. So the get bars function is going to take in this string, and it's going to return to me an array list, and what to eat is going to point to that array list. Okay, system out println. I want to eat, and let's iterate across all of these candy bars in the what to eat collection and display them out. Okay, so I've set up a what to eat array list and I've done my search and gotten back all the results. I'll then iterate across all of them and display out all of the Snickers. So if this works properly, what we should get is, I think about four Snickers displayed to the screen. So let's run and let's see what we get. Okay, so this is the initial display. When I call print on my treats, we've got all of our, it shows the entire array list there. And then here is our output after the search saying, I want to eat these four Snickers. All right, and you'll notice that they have unique IDs at 0, 3, 6, and 7. Here's our 0, 3, 6, and 7, and it looks like it's going through the array list and finding all the matches. Very good. Okay, so based on this tutorial, you should know how to create an array list, and you can create an array list of objects. In this case, we're creating an array list of candy bars. You should know how to iterate across them using our traditional for loop using a temporary index into and using the get function to get that ith value. We also introduced this new for loop structure that iterates across in a collection using this temporary reference and we can access that uh, object within the array list using that reference. Then we went into and defined a new class for ourselves here that had a private array list and filled it in with some values iterating across to display using the get function to get the ith value and probably most important and interesting in this tutorial is the ability to search for and return a collection of results for everything that matches in this data structure. And that'll do it for this tutorial.